Speed bag truckers don't usually do this. They'll usually just focus on the upper body and make it look really cool. But we want to make this practical for fighting. So we connect the punch to our feet. Okay? So when I block, no footwork. But when I punch, there's a falling step. And I can mark time and place that falling step. So block, punch, and step. Block, punch, and step. Lock, falling step with the punch. Lock, falling step with the punch. So as my punch comes in, I'm dropping. You can see some great boxers like Manny Pacquiao. Watch him do the speed bag. What does he do? Something like this. You'll see him kind of bouncing up and down. Those are falling steps. Now let's bring those falling steps back to the block punch pattern. A single session on the speed bag will allow you to rep out hundreds and hundreds of repetitions of important techniques such as the falling step so that you can deeply ingrain them into your muscle memory and eventually bring them out in your movement in sparring and fighting. Remember, if you have failed to connect your feet to your hands, you have failed to learn how to box. Using the speed bag with correct footwork addresses this problem directly. Trapping and uppercuts. Push, push, pull, pull. Blade of the hand, pulling with the back of hand. Push with the blade, and pull with the back or the ridge. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Push when I have a trap, uppercut, push, uppercut, push. Notice I'm releasing as I throw the uppercut. So you cannot hold and strike an opponent in boxing. Push, Pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, trap, train, 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 train. Hey, it's Rams Dewey. I'm over here at the UFL gym in Shanghai, China. I've had a number of questions about the speed bag, specifically how do you do it? What patterns should I use? How do I learn it? This is a piece of equipment that in a lot of fight gyms is absent, or there's only one, and you find it in a dark, dusty corner covered in cobwebs and nobody ever, ever goes there. There are a lot of practical applications of the speed bag, both in developing athleticism, timing, speed, power, all of those good attributes, but there are also some practical techniques that you can, you can apply to fighting that you can learn and develop and rep out in massive numbers by using the speed bag. But first, when you go to the gym and start swinging at the speed bag, this tends to happen. Oh, oh, oh. And you feel like a cat trying to play with a ball of yarn that you just can't touch. Now you could spend 10 hours straight swinging away at the speed bag doing this nonsense and 10 hours later this would still be happening. But if you spread that 10 hours out over three months, what is that, 10 minutes a day? Somebody do the math for me there. It comes out to something like 10 minutes a day. That type of consistency, logging those 10 hours 
over that period of time will yield results. Why? Because you do not improve from repetition to repetition. You improve from sleep to sleep. When you sleep on it, your mind repairs itself. It creates new neural pathways. You have aha moments. And then you wake up the next day smarter and you come back and instead of flaying one out it, you flail a little bit less. And maybe, maybe you can start to get an inkling of the pattern and the timing. And then you come back the next day and then you miss fewer rebounds. And you keep going at it until month three, after you log those 10 hours spread out, sleeping on it, improving, healing each time. And then you're gonna look way better than Rocky does in the Rocky movies. I'm not kidding about that. You will look like a professional on this thing. So, that's all it takes. And that's a lesson you can take from the speed bag to every aspect of martial arts and every aspect of your life where you want to develop a talent or an ability. Spend a little bit of time every single day at it. I'm going to tell you about a professor I had in college for a modern dance improvisation class. Yeah, I have a degree in modern dance. Did you know that? I used to dance professionally. Did ballet, classical ballet, and modern, but anyway, that's beside the point. At the beginning of this class every day, Professor Raymond Robinson, that was his name, very smart dude, very good choreographer, great dancer, and he knew a lot about how the human body works and how the human mind works. And he passed out a bunch of juggling balls. We said, what's this for? I thought this was a dance class. And he said, it is. Sorry, we've got some drilling going on here. I'm gonna get close to the microphone. And he said, it is, but here's what we're gonna do. For the first five minutes of every single class, before we dance, we will juggle. Nothing but juggling. We all said, we don't know how to juggle. He said, that's okay. Start slow. Throw the ball up and down from one hand to the other. That's okay. And then, you know, when you feel comfortable with that, maybe a few weeks later, try two balls. A few weeks later, you'll feel more comfortable. Then try three, and then four, and then five, and six. And we all laughed. No way we can juggle six balls. Five minutes a day, the end of the semester, I could juggle six balls, something I had never, ever thought I would be able to do, and I totally could. At the same time, when I decided to buckle down and learn the speed bag, I took Raymond Robinson's advice, five minutes a day. Because if you burn yourself out trying to swat at this thing for 10 hours a day, you'll never do it. You will get so sick of the speed bag, you'll abandon it and it, you'll leave it in that dusty corner of the gym where nobody ever goes. Five minutes a day will change your life. Let's start with the first most important speed bag pattern. Actually, before we do that, every speed bag swivel is different, but most of them have a pin. You want to check that pin and make sure it's firmly attached, firmly screwed in, however it's attached, that it's not going to fly out and hit you in the eye when you're using the speed bag. If it's got an adjustable screw right there, make sure all of the pieces are in place before you start hitting it, okay? Important safety precaution. And if at any point it starts to loosen up, stop, tighten it back up during your workout. Now, the block punch pattern. The hands are gonna move in a figure eight like this. The first one is coming in with the back of the hand. It's not actually a punch. A lot of people say, you don't box like this. And yeah, that's true, we don't, we don't punch like that. But I'm gonna tell you, a great deal of what you do on the speed bag is not actually punching. It's hand fighting. Defensive and offensive hand fighting. That is when you manipulate your opponent's hands and arms with your hands and arms. That's any time the hands and arms come in contact with each other. How often does that happen in a fight? I'll tell you, constantly. As soon as you get toe-to-toe -to -toe or in the pocket, you are constantly hand fighting, trying to make spaces, trying to control spaces, trying to mitigate damage. And that's where a lot of this comes in. So one of the most basic ones, before we can get into the, the uh, details of how to use this in a fight, how to actually do it on the bag. So first one, I'm gonna punch it with the knuckles, three knuckle contact here, 
to make sure our hand is in the right place. If you come from a traditional martial arts background, karate, taekwondo, something like that, you may be used to punching with the first two knuckles. That'll throw you off a bit for working with the speed bag. Use these three, three knuckle contact, like Jack Dempsey taught. So I'm going to connect like that. All right. So I'm going to throw this little short hook there. And if you don't know how to control this thing, just practice punching it first. Go from loose, loose hand to a tight fist on impact, and then relax again. So that punch is coming inside. Now with that same hand, I'm gonna whip it outside with a backhand, like a hammer fist with this part of the hand right here. So, punch, and now backhand lock or frame. All right, now with the other hand, I'm gonna punch with the three knuckles and I'm gonna backhand block or frame. When I say block, I don't mean stop a punch from coming at your head. I mean this is connecting with your opponent's arm. Okay, maybe it's knocking it out of the way. Maybe their guard's up and you're knocking this hand down so you can make an opening and knocking that hand down so you can make an opening for that shot. Okay, that's one, one application here. So again, block, punch. Lock, punch, lock, punch, lock, punch, lock, punch. All right, now, you'll notice there's a rhythm to this. With this pattern, the rhythm is 3 4. It's a 3 4 musical rhythm, like a waltz. 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, like that. Listen. 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3, 1 2 3. Or you can time it like this. Hit it and hit it and hit it like this. Hit it and 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 hit it. And hit it. Right. Hey, how's it going? The other patterns also have different rhythms. For example, this one, two four. One two one two one two one two one two one two. Hit and hit and hit and hit. Right. So there's a music to it. So back to that block punch pattern. Block. So it's like a very, very fast Viennese waltz as far as rhythm goes. Another very important tip about the speed bag that I forgot to mention is the position of the elbows. So we're going to raise the elbows high like this on the horizontal plane. Why? Because our hands tend to drop to the level of the elbows. If my elbows are pinched into the side, as they would be if I was fighting, Using speed bag technique, I would tend to sling the hand from up overhead, clipping my hand on the backboard of the speed bag, injuring myself, and dropping my hand down to my hip in the process. This happens all the time. When people start out, they will sling their hands like so. Instead, keep the elbows up high, and that way the arms will come out on the horizontal plane, and they will never drop below shoulder level. Another thing the speed bag trains is the muscles in the forearm, the wrists, and the hands. Our ability to snap that punch together tightly. It's the, the tail end of the punch. The heavy bag, the pads, sparring, all of that allows us to train the whole body as one piece. Think of that as the compound lifts of weightlifting, whereas the speed bag is accessory work where we focus on individual parts to make them better.